Hi there, my name is Rhea and I'm a teaching artist at the De Young Museum. We're visiting our next door neighbor, the Japanese Tea Garden. Let's walk there. We will learn about the Japanese Tea Garden's history and find inspiration from nature to make art. We will also look at one of my favorite artists, Ruth Asawa, and learn about abstraction. Bring some watercolor paper and pencils and later, we'll even add watercolor to it. Let's take a look at this plaque Ruth Asawa created. To honor Makoto Hagiwara and his family, who nurtured and shared this garden from 1895 to 1942. Let's reflect on the history of this garden. I'm excited to share this with you. The Hagiwara Tea Garden Drive is named in honor of Makoto Hagiwara and his family's contributions in creating this beautiful garden. Makoto immigrated to the U.S. from Japan in 1878. In 1894, he became the caretaker of the Japanese tea garden. He took care of this garden for 31 years. With his own money, Makoto expanded the garden with ponds and pathways. He even built a house here where generations of his family lived. After Makoto's death, his daughter and then her son continued to care for the garden. Sadly, in 1942, due to anti-Japanese sentiment, his family was displaced and forced to stay at an internment camp in Utah. They lost many of their belongings and their home was demolished. Generations of hard work the family put into the garden were destroyed. His great-granddaughter, Tanako Hagiwara, was only four years old at the time and had vague memories of this traumatic past. Here is Tanako, now with her son, celebrating the garden's 125th anniversary by revisiting the site of her childhood home. Artist Ruth Asawa shared a similar experience with the Hagiwaras. She was also sent to an internment camp as a child, along with approximately 120,000 Japanese Americans who were forced to leave their homes and move into internment camps in 1942. Ruth grew up on her family's farm. Like the Hagiwaras, she also loved nature. She found a lot of inspiration there for her art. Now it's our turn to find inspiration from nature. Let's walk around the garden and take in the serene surroundings. Notice the plants and trees the spaces around it. Find any lines and shapes that look interesting to you. What do they look like? Capture some of these lines and shapes on your paper. Use any color you like. Don't worry so much about detail. Create as many drawings as you want. I'm back in my art studio and I have my drawing from the garden. Now let's add watercolor to it. Before we start, Let's look at Ruth Asawa's watercolor paintings. She abstracted the leaves by focusing on the background. Do you see some of the shapes and colors overlapping? Notice the shadows and shapes within shapes. By repeating the shapes in the background, she was able to create a pattern. Look at the flow and movement on this painting. I love how she used her imagination and used different colors. Pick your favorite drawing. And let's start painting! You will need paint brushes, a cloth rag or paper towel, watercolor, a water cup, and a palette. Focus on the areas around your leaves. This is called negative space. Let's fill these in with watercolor washes. First, dip your brush in water, tap gently on your rag, then pick any color you like. Move it to your palette and squish it around. Now apply it on the background. Once it's dry, overlap it with other colors to see what happens. Follow your imagination as you paint and make it colorful. Here are my paintings. I would love to see yours too. Did you paint a new shape or create a pattern? I hope you had fun painting. 